Hey everybody, this is Glenn Davidson and I am an engineer for broadcast media operations at Montclair State University. And today I'm going to show you how to operate our Omnion servers. From recording new clips to playing clips back, I'm going to show you everything you need to know for your production class. So let's get started. Once you've logged into the computer with your NetID, go over to the icon that says Omnion servers and double click on it. Here you'll see all the control rooms listed in the building and we have all the playheads organized by control room. So if you double click in B, you'll see channels 13 through 18 which we use in control room B. And you double click on control room C, you'll see channels 1 through 6 which are used in control room C. And then you take a look in presentation hall, 7, 8, 9, and 10 are used for presentation hall. And then we have two utility servers that we use for backup and other purposes. For this demonstration, we're going to be focused on Control Room B. So you go in Control Room B and you double click on each of the playheads and it'll open up a bunch of little Windows Media Player looking type uh, windows. You can minimize that, get it out of the way. Now I like to organize these server playheads in the same manner that you see them up on the monitor wall in the front of the control room. We have uh, two different rows of three server heads each. Now these server heads are what we use to record and playback files from the server and each of them are set up in a certain way for each control room so when you go inside you kind of know what to expect each time. So for control B we have server 13 as your main program record which is where your video, your switch shoot, your audio all goes into that one playhead. In addition we have channels 14, 15, and 16 set up for what are called ISO records and an ISO record is where you have one source going to a playhead along with audio. And uh, for control room B we have camera 5 going to channel 14, camera 6 going to channel 15, and camera 7 going to channel 16. The ISOs are more intended to be used in the edit room, and the intra-level courses might not necessarily have to use them, but it's good for you guys to know that they are there. And lastly, we have channels 17 and 18, and we use them to pull up files for playback. So now that you know what all the server heads are for, let's put them to use. So we're going to create a new clip and then pull up a clip to play back. These are things that you need to do before the presentation actually starts. While the director and the camera people are getting themselves set up, you will be creating these files and getting ready for playback while they are doing that. So to create a new clip, you want to go to channel 13 and then click on the new button. What the new button will do is pull up this dialog box that lets you put in a file name. Now according to our file naming guidelines, you have to set up the file name a certain way. Class dash professor dash type of recording dash file name dash date of recording. So to start our file name, we're going to use the three character designation for intro, which is TV1. Then we're going to use Professor Gant as an example, G-A-N. Now for type of recording, there are a bunch of different recording types and they are mentioned in the guidelines in your syllabus. For server 13, this is a program record, so we're going to put the letters PGM down to represent program. Okay, there we go. And for file name, this is a demonstration that I'm doing, so I'm just going to put down Glenn Demo. Uh, for your classes, I'm sure your professors will have different file names that they want to use for different projects, but we're going to use Glenn Demo for a point of this demonstration. And then after that, we're going to put a six-digit representation of today's date. Today is August 3rd, 2020, so we're going to put 080320. And then we're done. Click OK. And then once we've done that, we're going to see a couple things change out here. Just give it a second. OK, and then we'll see that the file name is up in the clip window. Um, down there it says queued for record where it had said stopped. Uh, the red record light is now on and the transport controls to the left are now blanked out. So now this record head is ready for recording. So the next thing we want to do is pull up a file for playback and we're going to pull up the countdown clock file which is saved as tvdm-pkg-countdown-evg. So we want to go over to channel 18 and click on load and then we're going to look for that file. We can start typing in TVDM and eventually we'll see the file uh, show up in the list. I'm going to click down a little bit and drag it over just so you can see the full file name, TVDM, package countdown EVG. Then hit load. And then up top right there it says that the file is loaded. And then we can hit close. So now let's take a look at what we're actually working with here. 
you hit the play button. It's a good practice to do when you pull up a clip. And we see the countdown clock because it goes from 10 all the way down to 2. The director uses this countdown clock to get the uh, shots ready for the beginning of the production. So now we hit pause when we're done. You want to hit pause and not hit the stop button. You want to get in the habit of hitting the pause button when you're playing back. And then when you hit this in button, it takes you right back to the top of the video. So you hit play and you can take a look at it again. So we're going to hit pause. And now we're going to show you what happens when you hit stop instead of hitting pause. So we hit play and then it goes. You see how it drops to black like that? When you play it again, it takes about a s half a second to get itself back playing properly. This can be the difference between a good take and a bad take. You want to get in the habit of hitting pause and not stop. So for the intro classes, that's all you really need to do for your first couple of productions. Have a program file ready to record and also to have the countdown clock ready for playback. But for your later productions, as well as some of the more advanced classes, uh, you'll also have to roll in other roll-ins that are provided either by us or by a classmate. Now, in the case of the countdown, there is no queuing up that needs to be done because you're playing the full clip. But other courses, other classes, you may have to take that clip and queue it up and play back at the right spot. And I'll show you how to do that. So for this, we're going to look for a PSA by the Girl Scouts. So we're going to go to load on channel 17. And we're going to look for tvdm-package-girlscouts-evg. So there's the file there. We hit load. It says it's loaded. And then we hit close. So now let's take a look at this PSA. We hit play. And there it is. It fades right up on the opening graphic. So this is already queued up clip. And I want to show you how to queue one up. So we're going to go back to the top. We're going to click this clear button. I'm going to bring this back to the top again. Now, most of these uh, clips that you get are going to have a countdown, a slate, bars, and tone in the beginning of it. We're going to hit play right now. The best thing to do when queuing up is to play it, and then when you see the three on a countdown, we want to pause on that three. Because we like to do a three second pre roll to give the director enough time to get themselves oriented to go to the next shot. So here we see the countdown on the PSA, 7, 6. We're going to get ready to pause on that 3, and we do. Now we're a little off on the 3. We like it where the black bar is up on kind of like the 11 o'clock position on an analog clock. So we're going to get it right up there. There we go. And now we're going to mark that spot. Now watch what happens to the playhead when you mark it. See how it goes? Uh, back to the top without us having to move it. You try to move it back and you can't do anything before that. So every time you hit play, it's going to show right up on that spot. So now we're all queued up and ready to go for our presentation. So let's talk about some of the commands that the server position has to worry about during production. Server is worried about roll commands and record commands. And the only time that you have to worry about a take is when it comes to the countdown. So any time that there is a record or a roll, server needs to be paying attention. So let's start with the very first command that the director says is ready, roll, and record. At that point, you get yourself ready to hit the record button. Don't actually hit it. And then they'll say, roll and record. At that point, you press the, you click the mouse on the red record button, and you'll notice a couple things change. You'll see that it says it's recording, it's red, and the time code's going. Now, if you happen to be doing ISO records, I know for the first produ couple of productions you aren't, but if you are later on, you'll have to hit the record on all of the other record heads in order for it to be recording. At that point, you tell your director speed. When everything is blinking, red, recording, you say speed. Speed is a kind of an old-time term used for when they were recording on old uh, magnetic playheads. So you just say that to your director, and that is the way you let your director know that everything's good, and they can go on to the next step. The next step is ready bars tone, take bars tone. Server doesn't worry about that. Ready slate, take slate. Server doesn't worry about that. Now ready take countdown, the server does worry about that. Because even though it's a take, you still have to roll the countdown. So ready take countdown, you get ready to hit the play button. And take countdown, you hit the play, and then the countdown clock goes. Now once that countdown clock is over, the director will take on the next step. At that point, after they take on the next step, you can stop it and then bring it back to the top. 
as we go on with the production, if your production has a role in, the director will eventually want to call for it. So it's the same thing as the countdown. So when they say ready to roll PSA, ready to roll server 17, ready to roll roll in, just ready to roll, you get yourself ready, and then they'll say roll it, then you hit play, three, two, one, take a track up, close mics. The take it and track up commands are for the switcher and the audio operator. So you don't have to do anything for those. You just have to monitor the clip, make sure that it plays right. And again, just like the countdown clock, don't stop it or anything until it is completely finished. So when we get to the end of the production, the director and the floor manager will uh, count down from 10. And then they'll say fade sound picture out. Count down again from 10. And then during that, they'll say ready, stop tape and check. At that point, you get ready to stop it, and then when they say stop tape and check, you stop the tape, or stop the server actually, and then you bring the playhead up, and then you hit the play button, and if everything went right, you should have a perfectly good recording. I will be the first woman president. I will travel the world. Congratulations, you've just learned how to record and play back on our Omnion servers. So the last thing you need to do is to go to your individual playheads and eject all of the clips that are in each playhead. And then go to start and click the profile icon, hit sign out, and that will get it ready for the next user. This has been Glenn Davidson and thanks for watching.